Americans understand that we are at a pivotal moment in American history. And decisions that will be made right here in the Senate, decisions that will be made in the House, decisions that will be made in the White House regarding the budget and how we deal with the debt ceiling will impact virtually every American. Our children, working families, seniors, virtually every American for decades to come. The stakes are huge. The debate is not just about a budget, but the question of which direction America goes forward in. Today, the Republican leaders, uh, Eric Cantor in the House, John Kyle here in the Senate, withdrew from the bipartisan budget talks uh, that have been led by Vice President Biden. And uh, Senator Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader here in the Senate, was quoted as saying, no, I beg your pardon, uh, Senator Kyle said, the White House and Democrats are insisting on job-killing tax hikes and new spending. President Obama needs to decide between his goal of higher taxes or a bipartisan plan to address our deficit. He can't have both. But we need to hear from him. End of quote. We need to hear from the president. Well, I agree with Senators Kyle and Senator McConnell that we need the American people need, the Senate needs to hear from President Obama on this enormously important issue. But I believe that we need to hear from the President in a very different way than what Senator Kyle and Senator McConnell and Congressman Cantor want to hear. Here is where we are in America today. And this is what the debate is about. Virtually every American understands that to a very significant degree, the middle class in this country is disappearing. Median family income has gone down by $2,500 in the last 10 years. Many millions of workers today are earning lower wages than they used to earn. They are moving in the wrong direction. In a recent 25-year period ending in 2005, 80% of all new income did not go to the middle class, went to the people on top. So the overall dynamic of America now, a middle class collapsing, poverty increasing, Young people finding it very, very difficult to get decent paying jobs. And while all of that is going on, the people on top have never had it so good. Almost all new income is going to the top 1%. Interesting piece in the Washington Post this Sunday talking about the growing gap between the very, very rich, everybody else. Wall Street, whose thievery and illegal behavior and recklessness caused this recession, now making more money for their executives than they did before the recession that they helped cause. Top 1% today earning more income than the bottom 50%. Top 1% alone earning 22% of all income in America. Top 400 individuals in this country own more wealth than the bottom 150 million. And I know, Mr. President, you have made the point about the gross inequities and unfairness in our tax system, that while the middle class is sinking, the people on top have been able to enjoy effective tax rates that are the lowest in recorded history, that janitors, that cops, that nurses, that working people today are paying an effective tax rate that is higher than millionaires and billionaires. That's the reality economically that this country faces today. And then that is the reality that we have to deal 
as we move toward a budget. Most Americans, every single poll that I have seen, says what is obvious, that if we are going to address the deficit crisis, it must be done in a way that is fair, that everybody participates in. Now, our Republican friends have a very unusual idea about how to solve the deficit crisis. Yes, they say the rich are getting richer. Yes, they say corporations are doing phenomenally well. Some are making billions of dollars in profits, not paying a nickel in taxes. Yes, they understand the gap between very rich, everybody else is going wider. And their quaint and interesting idea in the midst of that context is that while the rich get richer, they should not be asked to contribute one nickel, not one penny for deficit reduction. Quite the contrary. Under the Republican budget passed in the House, the so-called Ryan budget, while the rich get richer and corporations enjoy record-breaking profits, their budget proposes a trillion dollars more in tax breaks for the rich and large corporations. Meanwhile, while the middle class disappears and poverty increases, their idea for deficit reduction is to make savage cuts in programs that the middle class and working families depend upon to survive, to survive. Under the Republican budget, they would end Medicare as we know it in a 10-year period. They propose to give a senior citizen an $8,000 check, a voucher, and have that senior go out and get a plan, insurance plan, with a private insurance company. Mr. President, you tell me what kind of plan a 70-year-old person dealing with cancer or another illness is going to get with an $8,000 voucher. Are they living in the real world? Do they know what hospital care costs today? You eat up $8,000 in the first day. And yet that is what a senior is supposed to live on for health care for a year. But it's not only ending Medicare as we know it in order to give tax breaks to billionaires, it's savage cuts in Medicaid. Half the people on Medicaid are children. We are the only country today in the industrialized world that doesn't guarantee health care to all of its people. 50 million people uninsured. You cut Medicaid by 700 billion over a 10 year period, tens of millions more, including a lot of kids. No health insurance, they get sick. Working class parents, where are they gonna get the care? How do they get the care? Well, I guess we got to do that in order to give a tax break to a large corporation that already is not paying anything in taxes. Mr. President, let me just mention for a moment what is a fair way, a fair way to move toward deficit reduction in a way that the American people overwhelmingly support. You go out and you ask the American people, do you think it makes sense in terms of addressing the serious problem of deficit reduction to give a trillion dollars in tax breaks to the richest people and make savage cuts in programs that working people need. Health care, education, nutrition, environmental protection. Overwhelming majority of the American people say that is nuts, does not make any sense. We must not go in that direction. So when my Republican friends and the leadership say, well, there's a lot of responsibility now on the president. President has got to decide which direction he wants this country to go. They are right. And my hope is that the president of the United States listens to the American people and demands that deficit reduction consists of shared sacrifice, that we move to a deficit reduction not just on the backs of the elderly and the children and the sick and the poor, but that everybody I know, even people who make large campaign contributions, I know that's heresy to say here on the floor of the Senate, but maybe even large corporations who buy and sell politicians 
Maybe they should be asked to contribute toward deficit reduction. Maybe billionaires who have more money than they're going to spend in 100 lifetimes might be asked to pay somewhat more in taxes before we throw children off our health insurance or deny nutrition to low-income seniors. Mr. President, there are many, many ways to go forward in addressing the deficit crisis that is fair, that does not decimate programs that working families depend upon, especially in the middle of a severe recession. And let me just mention very, very few. We should not extend the tax breaks that President Bush gave the wealthiest people in this country. That's it. You got a one and a half trillion dollar deficit, 14 plus trillion dollar national debt. Sorry, we can't afford it. These guys have already received huge tax breaks. No more. Can't afford it. We have to take a hard look at our defense budget. We've got to begin bringing the troops home from Iraq and Afghanistan a lot faster than the president has indicated. The defense budget has tripled since 1997. It has tripled. It is time to make cuts in the defense budget, and we can do that while maintaining our strong defense capabilities. Mr. President, there are studies out there which indicate that large corporations and wealthy individuals are stashing huge amounts of money in tax havens like the Cayman Islands and Bermuda, and collectively they're avoiding paying $100 billion in taxes to the U.S. Treasury. I think that that is absurd. We've got to end those loopholes. They have got to pay their fair share of taxes. And I can go on and on in terms of the loopholes that exist for corporate America, which have got to be closed, the absurdity of the richest people in this country having an effective, a real tax rate lower than middle class people. But here's the issue. If the Republicans walk away from those negotiations, the American, the President of the United States has got to accept that challenge. He's got to go out to the American people. He's got to rally the American people around a deficit reduction program which calls for shared sacrifice. That is what the call of the moment is, and I hope that the President does that. And uh, with that, Mr. President, uh, I apparently will be reading a short statement. Mr. President, on behalf of Senator Kaka, I call up Amendment Number 512. 512.